Amen, amen. Cracker Barrel. That's Arkansas stuff, amen. <laughs> Whoo, good food. At Cracker Barrel. Now, Cold Stone, I don't even know what this is, brother. <laughs> we, we have none of these where we're at, but we have them around here, right? We'll visit them before we leave, all right? Do we have one of these here somewhere? Oh, we do have one. All right, I stand corrected. We have one in Little Rock, but well, I'm glad to be here. Arkansas is a strange place. We, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're kind of a backward uh, kind of a, a place. We're not as high tech as y'all are here. I mean, you're I mean, you're high tech. You know, brother, we're, there, is, there is one place. We're a little higher tech than you are. I, I saw this screen up here. And uh, now, now it's, it's automatic. Ours is recessed up into the ceiling, brother. You can't see it. It just pops down, man. I remember we first got that. How many of you know the screens? You pull the things down. And, and ours used to, when you pull it down, pull a little bit more, a little more, and then it'd go back up. And then you do it again. And I'll never forget when we finally got one of those screens like that. I stayed up all night pushing the button zzz, zzz, up and down. It was a lot of fun. But Arkansas is a crazy place, man. Arkansas is the only place. I'm not, this is, uh, I, I'm not joking. We had, a, we had a preacher from Arkansas come to our church and preach. And he is up preaching. And all of a sudden his cell phone went off. I mean, it started ringing. He stopped. I, I, you asked my wife. He stopped. He said, hello, write the message. He, he said, Emma Jean, I'm preaching right now. Yep, yeah, all right, thank you. I'll be home for supper later. Bye. And went right back to preaching like nothing. This is crazy. I mean, uh, and uh, one day I looked at our sound booth. And I'm not kidding you. We're, Arkansas is the only place where the man in your sound booth is a deaf man. I mean, we had a deaf guy in our sound booth. I'd say, we got a ring in the system. Somebody fix it. And he couldn't hear the ring. He, said, I, he, he looked at me and said, I didn't hear a thing. He's deaf. You know, uh, anyway, we had a lot of things to fix, but boy, I, I, I just want to, uh, Brother Alquist, thank you for, uh, for uh, this meeting, and, and, and Sister Alquist, I, I know all the work, everything, thank you for having a place where we can come, just relax, rest a little bit, recharge, get refreshed, amen, and I know about you, I need that recharging all the time, and uh, now, I see, I think I need to turn this thing on too, right, there we go, and now we're good to go, but thank you, all the messages have been great, I, I just... I've just, every single one, last night on Psalms uh, 100, uh, brother, where, where are you at in here, somewhere, uh, he's, he, he, okay, he's on the phone, he's on, he's on the phone, talking to Imogene right now, uh, but uh, <laughs> man, I tell you what, that, that thing on, about the sheep, and, uh, and boy, I'm just, I'm just writing notes, man, he, and, and the, the little nugget about, you have to lead the sheep, you can't push them, uh, you, you can't force them. And how many times I, I wrote down as a pastor how we, we try to beat our people into doing something. And I wrote down, I just need the lead in so winning. I need the lead in love. I need the lead. In, and boy, that was just powerful. And then the water pots last night, talking about that. And by the way, how did you do that? Did you notice he had no notes at all? He just walked around here, no, not a single note, and preached. Man, if that had been me, it would have been a five-minute message. We closed up and said, going home now. You know, I just preached a powerful message last night. And I, I enjoyed it. Talking about filling it up to the brim. And how much we need the Word of God. Amen. And I just appreciate that. Now, there's a couple of messages I didn't, I didn't appreciate so much. Uh, the one on being content, I didn't like that one too much. You say, why? Because I have a problem with that. You know, That's why. Uh, my wife's over there nudging me. Yeah, yeah, got you now, didn't you? Because I, I am one of those ones. I need the latest iPhone, the latest iPad, the, you know, that come out. Yeah, listen, you, you know those people, those crazy nuts that stand in long lines for the iPhones? I'm one of them. <laughs> you know? I don't do it anymore. I pay people to go do it for me now. <laughs> we, we had a couple of teenagers in our church, and they said, Preacher, you're going to go get the latest iPhone? I said, Man, I don't want to stand in that line anymore. I said, Hey, would you all do it? I'll feed you breakfast, man. I'll take care of you. Sure we will. And they took off. And at 3 o'clock in the morning, they're down there standing in line. I show up a little while later with some donuts and some biscuits, you know. And uh, they stood in line to get that iPhone. I, I, I like technology and uh, love it. When the iPhone first came out, uh, boy, I got it, I, and I was just playing with that thing, and, and I, I was always Blackberry, and Blackberry just kind of went by the wayside, and, and so I got that first iPhone, and uh, my wife came home uh, one afternoon, I said, honey, you, you, you've got to see this, this is the most amazing thing, watch this, and it had, you, know, you know who Siri is? You know Siri? You know? And is this your own personal assistant? And uh, every once in a while, I like to brag a little bit. I said, well, let me, let me, um, uh, I'll get back with you after I consult my personal assistant. I don't tell him who it is, but, but Siri, man, 
I said, now watch this. And I pushed the button. I said, Siri, call my wife. And Siri came back on and said, okay, Kevin, which wife would you like me to call? (laughs) I said, the one standing right here, this one. Not the other one, this one. And boy, my wife, all of a sudden she perked up, she's listening. Would you like me to call Debbie? Or, and boy, I'm listening too. I want to know what other wife I've got. Or would you like me to call Debbie Bernard? Apparently I had her in there tw- in my phone twice, you know, as my wife. And I was like, whoo, hallelujah. You know, uh, boy, uh, but I, I, love, I love technology. And uh, that sermon on contentment, I'm going to have to reevaluate some of these uh, things. But boy, we've, we've just had some fantastic sermons. Amen. And I just I appreciate that. Uh, that, that sermon uh, just a, a moment ago about all the list of things. Man. And uh, man, just so much wisdom. And I appreciate, I just, I just want to thank all of you for, uh, for being used by God uh, to speak to our hearts and to, to bring a message that, that God could use, that we could take back. You know, Brother, uh, uh, Brother Smith and, and uh, Brother Belcher, these guys, uh, years ago, I made a trip down to Florida and, and I was one of those young preachers. I was in my 20s and I uh, had, hadn't been pastoring all that long. Uh, but man, I, I was at the bottom. I mean, at the bottom. And, uh, and, and there was a preacher there. How, how many of you ever heard of a guy by the name of Bobby Robertson? You know Bobby Robertson? Uh, some of you know him. He, he was there preaching. And I guess God just uh, had, I felt like God must have put him right there for me because I was at the bottom. I was, about, I was one of those people, and, and we preachers do this, we, because a while ago you talked about not, not putting blame on the field or blame on things. And I was one of those preachers that said, boy, if deacon so-and-so or this person right here wasn't there, I could do a lot more. And boy, that caused me a lot of grief, a lot of problems. And Bobby Robertson got up and he started talking about the will of God for your life. And he talked about, he said, some of you preachers out there, he said, you're always talking about if it wasn't for so-and-so. And I said, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Did he know I was here? <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, well, that was me. And he said, you're always talking about if, if this wasn't there, if God put you somewhere else. And I'm thinking, boy, do I have a sign on me somewhere? He's talking to me. And, um, and he said, you know, sometimes God just puts you in a place because somebody's got to crack that thing somebody's got to stay long enough and crack that. And see, this church had been notorious. I made a, lo- a big mistake, and I don't recommend this. And brother, where, where, where you, where's the preacher at that preached just a moment ago? Brother, uh, brother uh, I, I made a mistake when I first got there. I went back through their church minutes and read all of them. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do it, please, don't do it. Every preacher, short-term, and res- one of them just res- resigned during a, a, a business meeting. Got so frustrated, they just made him resign. Uh, he just finally said, I'm out of here, I quit. He was like, right there. And, uh, and I'll never forget, I got in one of those kind of things, those business meetings, and some guy stood up and he said, I am this, and he went on for about 20, 25, and I kept thinking about, oh, Bobby Robertson said, somebody's got to crack this thing. And so this guy went on and on, and all eyes were on this guy, just a talking and talking and carrying on for 20 minutes. And all of a sudden, you know, after a while, you just get tired of talking. He talked and talked. I just sits quietly still. And he kept on and kept on. And finally, he had nothing else to say, except, unless he started repeating himself. So he just sit down. He said, what did you do? I said, anybody else got anything else they want to say? <laughs> Nobody did. I said, okay. I need a motion, we adjourn, adjourn and go home. <laughs> and that's all we did. <laughs> we, we got out of there. Uh, but see, they always use that technique to get rid of preachers before. Make them mad, make them angry, and fight back. And I just decided, Brother Bobby Robertson taught me something that day. You just stay long enough and you, and you bear through the trouble. And, and God will bless you through that. And, and boy, I, I get so excited. Listen, I, I, now I'm, I have ADD. You know, that, you know what that is, right? I didn't know it back when I was a kid. They didn't diagnose it what it was back then, but I have that. I, I, I have a hard time standing still and being still. Uh, but uh, old, old Bobby Robertson, when he did that, I thought, uh, on the way back, God, if you'll help me, I'll stay. And through the years, some of you guys are talking about faith promise missions. We had no clue what that was. We had never heard of it. I'd never heard of it before. I got in Arkansas, a lot of those preachers were doing it. And, and we started Faith Promise. And the Lord just blessed us through the years. And, and I, I'm thankful for, for God using preachers like you guys uh, here and the messages like now in meetings like this to be a blessing 
uh, to us, and I, I appreciate it greatly. Boy, Brother Alquist, I, I don't know. I'm not quite as uptown as you are. Did you all notice a song we sang a while ago? Uh, it, 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 on like page number eight. It, it, I th if I'm not mistaken, it said Beethoven on there. Yeah. Ludwig, Van did anybody see that? I thought, Beethoven? I, mean, I, I didn't know it. The, there's the one we just sang, I think I know that one, amen? <laughs> and those others, I, I, I don't know what they are, Beethoven. By the way, you, you, know, what, you know what happens uh, when you take a piano and hit a chicken with it, right? It goes around going bock, bock, bock. Anyway, never mind. All right. Get your Bible. Turn to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. And uh, 1 Samuel chapter 13. And uh, let's, uh, let's begin with verse number uh, 8. 1 Samuel 13, 8. It says that he, that he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, uh, said, bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And, he, and it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering, the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I, I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash, therefore said I, the Philistines, will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel uh, said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Now I want to stop there, and, and I, I want to preach just a simple, a simple message uh, from this passage of Scripture. I think, I think for me, it, in, in my ministry, this is something that, that I remind myself constantly, and, and so I pray that it will be a blessing. Let's pray. Father, uh, would you, uh, a, as you've already done uh, through these uh, preachers today and last night, would you just speak to our heart? and do something in our lives. May, may we be able to take something from your word today and may it, may it be a blessing and, and a benefit to us even after the services today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I've, made, I've made a few uh, trips. We, we have some missionaries in Thailand. We have a, a missionary out of our church in, in Thailand. And so I've made several trips over there. And I want you to hear... Um, I want you to hear uh, something uh, that um, uh, I'll just see if I can play this. Is this is this this will be the best one to do it on one? All right, all right. See if you can. Now it's going to be Thai language for a moment. Bangsu Station, please mind the gap between train and platform. Thank you for choosing our metro. Now, now we, we would ride what was called the metro station over there. And uh, now, now, now I'm, a, I, I'm like some of these guys. I'm, I'm a country boy. I grew up in the country and uh, it, uh, lived in, uh, grew up in Illinois and uh, on, a big, on a big farm there. We had a chicken farm. We had uh, 13,000 laying hens. We had milk cows. We had hogs and all that stuff. A matter of fact, my, my wife could tell you, when we, we made our first trip to Washington, D.C. with the kids when they were real little, we wanted to come over here and go to the Smithsonian. We knew nothing about uh, big towns like Washington, D.C. And somebody told us to park outside and take, I guess it's called the Metro maybe, and take that to go to the Smithsonian. We were lost as a goose. We got, we got down, we got in that place, and we saw people going through. We thought, how in the world do we do it? And finally there was a machine over there. Somebody was getting something out of that. So we walked over, we looked it over for a little while, couldn't figure it out. <laughs> We had no idea. And, uh, and so finally, uh, some man walked up and said, do you need help? And I said, yeah. I said, we, we'd like to go to the Smithsonian, but we have no clue. What, what do you do here? There's all kinds of, and he said, well, you take this color over here and that color over there. We said, what, what, what color are you talking about? And finally, he, he, he said, look, and he took my credit card and did all this stuff and counted us up and handed us stuff and said, get, that's how you get on. We got on there. Never been on, on, a, on a Metro before in our life. Uh, I mean, a, a John Deere tractor, sure, you know, uh, but a Metro, never. <laughs> And we got on that thing, and, and man, I tell you what, we, my kids, we were so excited. 
We, well, all of a sudden, we went down under the ground. We're like, oh, we just went underground. You know, we all shot to the window. And, and all, all of a sudden, my wife said, y'all are making idiots out of yourselves over here. <laughs> we didn't realize it. And we were so excited about everything, man. This is so neat. And, uh, and finally, we, we got off. We were supposed to wait for some other color to come along or something. And we're just standing around looking around. Not, wait, listen, we didn't know anything about these things. We, we don't have those things in Arkansas or where I grew up. And uh, all of a sudden, one of my kids said, hey, Dad. I said, what? He said, there's money down there. And I looked down there. There was those rails down there. And I'm looking at those rails. And I saw, I saw a shoe down there. And, and, and so I, I'm looking. He said, Dad, you're going to get it? And I said, well, if it's a quarter, I would. But a nickel, I'm not jumping down there. And, and we're standing at the corner. All of a sudden, we heard some lady screaming, Oh, get out of there! Get away from there! And all this commotion. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm completely deaf in one ear, so I didn't know where the sound was coming from. I heard all this noise. I said, Who, who, somebody's hollering. Where's it coming from? They're like, Dad, over there. And I looked over there, and here come a lady at full speed. Get away from there! And, and she came, and she said, You get back from there! And I said, Back from where? The edge right there! I said, Oh, what, what's wrong? You see that yellow line? I said, Oh, I see it now? And... She said, that's to stay behind. And see, there's seven, I don't know how many, hundreds of thousands of votes down on those two, those rails down there. People die on those things. And man, we hadn't ever a clue. I mean, if that had been a quarter, I, I'm not kidding. I would have jumped down there and tried to grab that, that coin. I had no clue. So we, now I get into Thailand. They got the M, this MRT Metro in there. And I kept hearing a phrase, please mind the gap. Mind the gap when, when entering or exiting the, the, the train. And uh, now you say, preacher, what, what, what is that all about? That was the phrase introduced in, in 1968 in London. Mind the gap. Because platforms had, in, in those days especially, the platforms were curved. And you have a straight car. And so you'd have a large gap between the straight car and a curved platform. In London, some of the gaps, even to this day, some of the gaps are uh, all the way up to 20 inches, 18 inches. And so they... they they put that because folks were getting hurt because they didn't mind the gap. And so please mind the gap between the train and the platform. You're about to step off of one platform onto another platform. So I want you to note a couple of things. First of all, there, there's a gap there from that platform to the next platform. You're about to leave one platform and step to another platform. And so you're going to leave one and arrive on another platform. And there's a gap in between. And what I want you to note mostly is, is that danger lurks between that platform and the next platform. In, 2000, in 2014, almost 300 accidents in London alone from people who didn't mind the gap. One lady gave a testimony how she, she was stepping over to the platform and didn't mind the gap. She fell through the gap and said before she knew it, she was eye level with the platform and her, her rib caves were being crushed. Many people have broken bones, uh, bummed out knees because they didn't mind the gap between the train and the platform, exiting one area to another area. Now, this story that we looked at just a moment ago in 1 Samuel 13, we have the, the Philistines, the Bible tells us that they were as the sand of the sea. They were everywhere. And, and the Bible tells us in verse number 6 of this passage of Scripture that, that the people were in fear and distressed. And they were, they were hiding everywhere. They're hiding in caves and hiding behind rocks. In verse number 7, it says that they were even trembling. And, and so verse number 8, and by the way, in verse number 8, seven days, I want you to notice something very important. Seven days were not fully up yet. It's very important. In verse number 10, it says, as it came to pass as soon as. Just, just, just a few minutes more, Samuel was going to show up. He would have been there. As soon, you see, but Saul made a decision to do something before Samuel got there. He did something that he was not supposed to do. Something that was designated for the high priest to offer the burnt offerings. And, and so between the time that Samuel uh, said I'd be there and the time that he got there, you find a decision being made, an action being taken by uh, by Saul, that if he had just did, if he had just done what he was supposed to do, look at the passage of scripture that we there's just a moment ago. Look at verse number thirteen, 
And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever, but now thy kingdom shall not continue. He said, You've done something foolish. He made a mistake in the gap time that cost him the kingdom all eternity. He said, God would have established this in your hands, but you didn't mind the gap. When they, when they tell you to mind the gap on those trains, that you're moving from one platform, that, there's a danger that lurks in, the, in that gap period. And if you're not careful, listen, I know many of people and many of preachers that didn't mind the gap and if you don't mind the gap, God, God has things that He wants to do in your life. But if you don't mind the gap, the gap time is a testing time that whether God can use you or not. That's why Joseph had to go through a time period. There was a time when, when Joseph felt like he was on the shelf. And there was a time that God was using Joseph. And it was the gap time that Joseph minded that gap. A lot, and so today, I, I want to. I want to just. Uh, I just want to go through a few things about in minding the gap. First of all, mind the gap in times of discouragement and doubt. I want to tell you something. You're going to get discouraged, and you're going to have doubt. But there's going to be a time that you won't be discouraged and you won't have doubt. But mind the gap between the time that you're discouraged and the time you won't be discouraged. Mind that gap in between. I, I, have, I have three. I was born in a big family. I have, there's eight of us children. And I have three sisters. On three different occasions, I got phone calls. One of my sisters had, had taken a bottle of pills. And they rushed her to the hospital. She tried to kill herself. Now, we, now, in my family, we, we didn't grow up in church. Uh, my, my parents, my folks never went to church. We didn't grow up in church. And by the way, uh, thank, thank God for those of you that had bus ministry because somebody came by my house and knocked on our door. Amen. Never forget it. His, his bus captain was Dennis Blink, and the bus driver was Brother Ed Morris. And, and, and some of my family members, they, they got on the bus. I, I wouldn't go. They come, week after week, old Dennis Blink, he'd come by and he'd knock on the door and say, why don't you go to church? No. I'll never forget because the first Sunday I'd ever been to a Baptist church was on the Easter Sunday because Dennis Blink came by and knocked on our door again. Every Saturday he'd show up and tell, ask us to get on the bus. And he came by and said, why don't you come? Your sister's going to come. Why don't you come? And I said, no, I don't think so. He said, but it's Easter Sunday. I said, that's all right. He said, we're having a egg hunt. I said, so what? He said, we're putting money in the eggs. I said, I'll be there. <laughs> I was one of those kids, you know. I was like that, you know. I was one of those mischievous kids. I, I'm one of those ones when the teacher would write on the board in English class, and she'd say, I am pretty. What tense is that? I'd raise my hand and say, past tense, <laughs> just for the joke of it. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> Don't do that, all right? One time my teacher said, I got an F on a grade one time. My teacher said, I don't... I said, I said, I don't think I deserve that F. I, great. She said, I don't either. She said, but it's the lowest one I can give. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> they said, we're putting money in the eggs. And I said, I'll be there. It's the first time I'd ever been to a Baptist church. I, 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 I'm thankful for those, those of you that labor in the ministry of, of the bus ministry to pick up children. Because I, would, I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the bus ministry. So thank you for that. And, and listen... There's going to be, my sister, she, uh, she, she took a bottle of pills. And when I got home, they'd already they'd, they'd pumped her stomach out. And, and, and she, she, she arrived. A few years later, another one of my sisters, all, all three of my sisters, another one of my sisters, one, one, she had taken a, a razor blade and cut her wrist and lay down in the bathtub to, to, to bleed out and to die. And, and then my other sister took an overdose also. They had to pump her stomach out. And finally, I, I gathered up my sisters, and I said, what's going on? Why are you doing this? And they said this. They said, you, you don't understand. They said, you, you don't have problems like we have. And I said, that, that's absolutely not true. Everybody, has, uh, the whole human race has problems. And, and what I'm trying to say is, be careful that you mind the gap 
when you have discouragements and doubts because there'll come a time that you won't be discouraged and have doubts, but if you don't mind the gap, what you do in between the time that you're discouraged and have doubt to the time that you don't are not discouraged and have doubt, if you're not careful, you'll make bad decisions during that time. That's exactly what, what Saul did here. He, he should have mined the gap. Samuel said, I'll be there. He should have waited out the whole entire time, but now he lost the entire kingdom. God would have established in thy hand, but because of what you did, he didn't mind the gap. So mind the gap in times of discouragement and doubt. Number two, let me say this, mind the gap in times of hurt and betrayal. I want to tell you something, there's a lot of folks. I, 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 uh, for, uh, for those of you that are younger, I, I hate to even tell you this, but you're going you're gonna to experience a lot of hurts in the ministry. And, and, and you're going you're gonna to cry a lot in pain. And you're going to experience betrayals. You're going to experience sometimes what David said in the psalm. I, it, would have been, it would have been okay if it was an enemy, but it was a, it was a friend. It was someone, and, and those are the worst kind. And you can get bitter, and, and it, be careful what you do. Now there's going to come a time that you're going to be above that. But mind the gap in, in the meantime that you that you feel the hurt and the betrayal to the time that you won't feel that hurt or it won't be near as much. Mind the gap. i never forget there was a preacher out in California. He, he was preaching. He's telling this story. And uh, he's telling about in his church there was a lady that had this parakeet by the name of Chippy. And, uh, and Chippy was a real excited parakeet. Man, it would whistle all day. Man, it was just woo -hoo. It was happy all the time, man. You go in the house, you said that, that thing would be whistling and chirping and everything else. And one day somebody told that lady that, that owned Chippy, told her it said that you could take a, you know, you have the birdcage. One, one of the uh, easiest ways to clean a birdcage is just use the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> just put it in there, clean it up, and it's fine. One day she's in there cleaning, she's cleaning that thing up. And, and the phone rang. And, and so she just kind of laid it down right there, went and answered the phone. Hello, she came back. A chippy was gone. <laughs> she thought, Where, what happened to Chippy? She finally realized that maybe it's Chippy. And so she took the vacuum apart, opened up the, the bag, and there was Chippy, all dusty. She took the dust, got cooked Chippy, and gave Chippy a bath, cleaned Chippy up. But one thing she said, said, Chippy never sang again. <laughs> Chippy only had a blank stare on Chippy's face from, from then on. Chippy wasn't Chippy. You know, I, I, met, I, I met people like that. Some hurt, some betrayal, and they're not Chippy anymore. You lost your song. Be careful, mind the gap the time that you feel hurt and betrayal to the time that you won't feel it, to mind that gap or you'll be one of those that'll lose your song. I know folks that are bitter. I, I, I know a guy right now. I, I, I'm not kidding. Some of you preachers, I know you, you, all this stuff happens to you all, well, maybe not all the time, but sometimes here and there. I had a guy walk up to me one time in the back of the church. He walked up and said, I want you to know something. I said, what? He said, I've been mad at you for seven years. I had no clue. You ever, you ever have stuff like that happen to you? Seven years. Well, why did you just come to me? You know, I've been mad at you for seven years. Now listen, folks, I, I'm not going to live that way. Yeah. Mind the gap. Not only in, in times of, of discouragement and doubt, but in times of hurt and betrayal. Let me, say, let me say thirdly. Mind the gap in times of temptation. Now, I've got news for you, preachers. We're as human as anybody else. And there's going to, there are going to come times that you're going to be tempted. You know, when Christ, remember when he, fast, he was fasting and he went into the wilderness and he was tempted of Satan? But you, do you understand that, that shortly after, during that time of temptation, shortly after, it said, and, and the devil left him? You know, there's going to be times that you're going to feel strong temptation. But that temptation's going to pass. Be, you won't feel that temptation. But be careful what you do in the time when you feel that temptation and it's there and the time that it's not there. I have a real good friend I went to Bible college with. One day he called me. He said, would you meet me? I, I live outside of Little Rock. He, 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 lived, he lived down in Alabama. He, he said, would you meet me in Memphis, Tennessee? I went, to, I went to meet him over in Memphis, Tennessee. We sit down at a meal and he began to weep. I said, what's wrong? He said, I, I've had an affair. 
He said, it just started. It, 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 it didn't really mean for it, but it just started. He said, my ministry. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something, guys. Some, some floozy, some gal, some whatever, and, you, and, and it gives you this uh, tingly kind of a feeling. That stuff's going to disappear. What you do in the time that you feel something there, at the time that you don't feel something, your whole ministry may rest upon that. Mind the gap. The time that you, and the temptation is there, that there won't be any temptation. Be careful what you do in between that time. Samuel, uh, Samuel told Saul, wait, I'll be there the seven days. All he had to do was wait till the end of seven days. But he didn't mind the gap. And, and Samuel told Saul, now the kingdom's been removed from you forever. It would have been established in your name forever, but not now. Because he couldn't mind the gap. I think of that a lot of preachers that could have been used in great ways, but they didn't mind the gap. In times of temptation, in times of discouragement, in times of doubt, in times of betrayal, mind the gap. That temptation won't last forever. Mind the gap in times when you just don't understand. Mind the gap. I'll be honest with you. This may be one of the hardest ones. Can you imagine, Joseph? God was silent for a long time. But I promise you this, God wasn't still. Amen. He was working. Mind the gap when you just don't understand what's going on. You mind the gap because there'll come a time you will understand what's going on. Amen. But in the in the between the time that you don't understand to the time you do understand, mind the gap. Job, as he sit there with the, the piece of pottery and his friends coming along, said, Oh, that somebody would just come and tell me what's going on. But Job, he did a good job of minding the gap. Amen. And then there was a day later. And by the way, he didn't understand all of it on this earth, but he understands it all now. Amen. Mind the gap. Several years ago, I was, I was at home. And I got a phone call, and it, it's those calls you don't like to get. It was, it was my family. And they said, you, you need to get home. I, I, I live outside of Little Rock, all my family, in Mount Vernon, Illinois, outside of St. Louis, Missouri. They said, if you... If you, want to, if you want, it was my little brother Greg, they said, if you, want, if you want to see him alive, you need to come home. He's been in an accident. And I, I, got, on, I got on the next plane that I could to go up to, to Missouri, uh, St. Louis. He was there in the hospital. And what had happened was, uh, he, he was on the farm, and, and it, there, was a, there was these big, uh, they're machines. That, you've seen the big hay bales, the big round ones? Y- y'all have those up here, big round hay bales? Okay, all right. And, and those big round hay bales, there's a machine that you put those in, and then it'll thresh it out and feed the cows. And that machine wasn't working right. And so he got in the machine, he was working on it. And the farmhand didn't know it. And so the farmhand got on the tractor, and, and there's a hydraulic door. You can see that it's up, but you can't see anything inside of it. You can see the door was up. The farmhand got on the tractor, started up, saw the door up, and, began to, and pulled the lever to go down. And my little brother heard the tractor start, and so he, he began to, to try to slide out of this thing, and he, he only got halfway out when the hydraulic door shut down on his waist area. It snapped his back in two, broke all of his pelvic bones. When I got there, they'd, they'd already given him 40-some uh, units of blood. They said he probably won't make it. He was just lifeless there. And it, a, after several surgeries, he, he, he finally he started doing a little better. And, and, and after a, a month there, they finally got him healthy enough to send him off to Colorado. There's a, special, there's a special hospital out there. Even, like, who's the Superman guy? What was his name? Uh, 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 the guy that broke his neck. Uh, Christopher Ree. It was the place where Christopher Ree was at. And, and so there he is. He's in this rehab place. And, and as I mentioned, there, uh, there are eight of us. And so each of us decided that we would take one week each and spend with him. And so I had my week. I flew out to Colorado to be with him for a week. I happened to be there the week that they were trying to teach him. Most of you, how many of you know what, what a colostomy, you know what that is? They were trying to teach him because they had removed all of his intestines. He has no intestines. And so from then on, when, he, when he'd go to the bathroom, it would be inside of this bag. 
and they're trying to teach him. I was there that week. And boy, I, I just can't tell you the, the stench and the problems. That thing opened up, and it just, it just went all over the place. And, and I, I'll never forget this moment. He looked at me, and he said this. He said, Kevin, why did this have to happen? Why? One day his life is normal. The next day he's paralyzed from the waist down. He's got a broken back and he'll wear that me the rest of his life. He said, why did this have to happen? Now fast forward 10 years. I was visiting. We, we built him a special house where he could, where he could uh, uh, get around in handicap wise. He, could, he can even drive a car. He's got, he's got hand things he can drive a car with. And I went up there 10 years later and he looked over at me and said, hey, Kevin, I know why. I said, why? He said, you know, I have to go every week. All the time, I have to go to rehab. And I'm in rehab with people that have broke their necks, broke their backs. He said, who's going to tell these people about Jesus? The broken backs, broken necks. God placed me right over here. So that I could be used here. I want to tell you something, folks. There's going to be a time you're not going to understand what's going on in your life. But there will come a time that you'll understand what's happening. But in the middle, between that time, mind the gap. Amen. The time that you say, I don't understand anything, to the time that you will understand. Mind the gap. Now let me quickly tell you how to mind the gap very quickly. Number one. Mind the gap with thoughts of your salvation. Boy, this is just, you know, never forget what God's done for you. Amen. That produces thankfulness. I'm a joint heir. Amen. Amen. Let's don't forget. See, Saul, see, Saul forgot about this. You remember at one time the Bible said, when thou wast little in thine own eyes. And brother, the other night, uh, Brother Belcher preached, preached about being nothing. And Saul was little in his own eyes. Listen, mind the gap. When you're in that time period, from one platform to the next platform, whether it's a, a gap where it's temptation, whether it's doubt, whether it's discouragement, whether it's, uh, whether it's some betrayal, mind the gap with thoughts of salvation. What God has never forget your salvation. Just never get over it. Amen. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Boy, you, you know, this, uh, where's that creamery uh, uh, thing at? How, 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 many of you grew, how many of you grew up in a time period where you didn't go to restaurants? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, we never went to restaurants ever. There's too many, eight of us kids, you know, big family. But I'll never forget. I'll never forget the first time we went to McDonald's. The only reason my dad took us, he loaded us up. We had old Ford Galaxy station wagon. He loaded us all up in there, man. And, and he said, we're going to McDonald's. We're like, we're going to McDonald's? <gasps> McDonald's. Never been to McDonald's before. Got in there. Man, he pulled that up there. He went inside. And the only reason he did it, because they, they had hamburgers on special for 15 cents. He, I, he bought 50 hamburgers. <laughs> brought them out to the vehicle. We're like... We can eat more than one hamburger, too. I took my hamburger, I opened it up, and I saw the pickle. I saw the little chopped up onions in there. I saw the, 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 the mustard, the ketchup in there. I took that hamburger, and I ate it all around in a circle. Until the very middle part that had the, the pickle, the juicy ketchup, mustard, the onions all there. And I stuck it in my mouth. Oh, mm, ah, that was so good. I did every hamburger I ate that night like that. <laughs> I'm not lying. This is years later. My wife and I, we got married. And, and see, all these little things, you, you don't think about them, but you know, you, And one day I was eating a hamburger and I was going. <laughs> she, said, she looked at me and said, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean? She said, you look like a chipmunk. I said, I'm just eating. And, and I got to thinking about it. Why do I still do that? You know? I love... You know, I, to this day, I still eat my sandwiches like that. <laughs> you know, I think sometimes we lose our thrill and excitement about stuff. Don't ever lose the thrill and excitement about what God did for you. Amen. You know, the only difference between you and the drunk or the man on skid row is the grace of God. And that's it. Yeah. God saved us. So mind the gap with thoughts of your salvation. 
Number two, mind the gap with thoughts of the Savior. Amen. Woo! Don't keep Jesus out there all the time. Mind the gap with the thoughts. Of, what I, I like about Paul, he was writing to the Colossians and he was writing to them and, and some of the people there in Colossians, they, they had told him that Jesus wasn't enough and he said, oh no, Jesus is all wisdom and all knowledge, amen. And he was telling them and, and then there he told him, he said, look, he said, I want you to do a couple of things. I want you to know the word of God. And, and he said, I want you to be rooted in Jesus Christ, built up and rooted in Christ. Listen, mind the gap being with thoughts of our Savior rooted deep in Jesus. You know, my, I, we, we don't get out a whole lot. We, we, first time I went out west is last year, and, and we, we, went to, we were in Arizona. And, and I, was, I was surprised as we drive through Arizona. Listen, it's nothing like Arkansas out there. And there was this sand, but I, I noticed out there in the middle of it, everywhere that there were these trees, these mesquite trees, and they'd, they'd grow up, and everything's dead around them. That thing would be green. And, and I realized something. You know, it, it, in that world, out in desert plants, there's, there's different kinds of, there's xerophytes and there's phreophytes. There's some of those that are like the cactus. It's a, it's a xerophyte. It's a succulent plant. It just takes the... Uh, it takes, if a rain or something comes, it takes it right then, sucks it all up, and then holds it right there. And then just uses it as, it, as the time goes on. And the roots just sort of spread on top of the ground, about, about four inches down, that's about it. And then there's phreophytes. And that's those who have something called tap roots. And those mesquite, those mesquite uh, uh, trees, what they do is, they're called that, these xerophytes, uh, or free of fights because they go down all the way down and they tap into the water table all the way down and they're rooted in the water table. Some of those roots have been known to be up to 160 feet long. You know, you know those of you that will still be green and happy when the winds are blowing and the deserts out there, it's those of you that are rooted and built up in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I'll tell you how you mind the gap. You mind the gap with thoughts of the Lord Jesus Christ and with thoughts of the Savior. And then let me tell you, let me give you this. Number, number three, mind the gap with thoughts of Scripture. Not only thoughts of your salvation, not only with thoughts of the Savior, but with thoughts of the Scripture. Brother, I, I, uh, Brother uh, uh, Smith, you guys last night, man, Psalms 100. When you said Psalms 100, I was in my seat about to cry. And I'll tell you why. Because I went back to a vacation Bible school that I attended. And I, I wasn't even saved. But, but they, they taught us Psalms 100. It's the first passage of the Scripture that I memorized word for word. With Psalms 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people. And the sheep of His pasture, enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endure to all generations. Amen? Amen. Man, I'll tell you what. Mind the gap with Scripture, man. Fill it like, to, like our preacher said last night, the, to the brim, man. Get the water of the Word and fill it to the brim. I'll never forget, I was driving down a highway. It discourages everything because of something that had happened in my life. But a scripture popped in my head. It said, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you, falsely for my sake. For great is your reward in what? Heaven. Heaven. I, I was going down the road, a discouraged man, about to throw in the towel, and all of a sudden, I went, oh! That man just gave me rewards. Amen. Everything changed. I thought, hallelujah. It, listen, saturate scriptures. Get, when you get in that gap, mind it with thoughts of your salvation. Mind the gap with thoughts of the Savior. Mind the gap with thoughts of scripture. And let me give you the last. Mind the gap with thoughts of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what I love about 1 Thessalonians 4? It says, the Lord Himself shall descend. Amen? Amen? He's not sending an entourage. He's not sending the angels. The Lord Himself is coming. Mind the gap with thoughts of the second coming. Keep your eyes on the finish line. Several years ago, at the end of, the, I think it was 1998 or 99, I went to India. I'd never been out of the country before. 
And one of my, one of my best friends, the missionary there, Matthew Henry. And I, I went there. I'd never been there. Didn't know what to expect when I got there. I want to tell you something. It's not like America. You're not in Kansas anymore. I got there. And I got off that plane. I thought, what in the world is that smell? I found out right away what the smell was. And then all, all the food they served. Now, if you, if you love curry, it's heaven for you. I'm not a big curry fan. It was curry for breakfast, curry for lunch, curry for supper, curry in the cupcakes, curry, everything. Curry, 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 curry. And when I came home, my wife said, what's that smell? I said, it's curry. It's oozing out of my pores. I've been eating it so much. It just oozes now. And I got there, and, I, and I'll tell you, the hotels aren't the same as our hotels. You, you, you turn the shower on, it, 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 one, it goes that way and that way. You, you have to decide whether you stand over here or over here. I mean, it, it, and then we got out, we got out to the, and, and, and none of them had hot water. And, and, and then the, the, the toilet situation over there. Now my wife, she's always getting on to me, please, please don't say too much. I, I, I get a little gross every now and then, and she says, please, be, please behave yourself. But listen, I, I'm not used to a toilet where you put one foot over here and one foot over there and squat. I couldn't keep my balance. You can't read a newspaper on one of those things. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, this thing is moving around everywhere. Is, and I, I was one miserable being. But we were eating at a restaurant. And I said, where's the bathroom at? And it said, go down this alley, turn down the road, go down the second door to the left. I went in there, and there's water standing that deep. Man, when you get on one of those things, you've got to roll your pant legs up. You gotta, I, mean, I mean, it's just all, all this time, and, man, and the food. Man, I just wanted a pizza. I wanted something. And I'll tell you what I did. I got my calendar out, and I circled the return home date. <laughs> and every day, when things weren't going so good, I'd open the calendar up. I'd say, I'm going home. Right there. And when every time I take a cold shower, I'd open my calendar up a little later, so I'm going to get a hot shower on that day right there. Every time I do the squatty potty, I'm going to have a real one on that day. Man, son, you never seen such a happy camper when that day arrived. I, I got home. My wife met me at the door. She said, how are you doing? Come and give me a hug. I said, forget you. One moment, please. I'll be right back. Hold the arms there. I went in my bathroom and grabbed the commode. Oh, I am glad to see you. I brushed the back of the bow for a while. I, I missed you. And I went back and said, honey, how are you? I'm glad to see you. I found out something. I found out I can endure a lot of things. As long as I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going to see Jesus one day. You know, Paul said, he said, our light of fiction endure it but for a while. Amen. Because we're going to go home. And we're going to see Jesus. You know that song? It will be worth it all. Amen. Amen. And so folks, listen. There's a danger out there. There's a gap where you're moving from one platform to another. It's a danger where many of God's people demons fell through it. Having loved this present world, he fell through the gap. And there's a gap of temptation. There's a gap there's going to come a time that you're not going to be tempted. And you're, that discouragement it will be gone. And when you don't understand to will, you will understand. But mind that gap. And mind it with thoughts of your salvation, with thoughts of the Scripture, with thoughts of the Savior, and with thoughts of the second coming. And that gap will not be a tragedy for you in this room, if you'll mind the gap with those things. God bless you. Thank you.
In 1968, Kevin Bernard found a fascination with basketball, which he later turned in for a fascination with motorcycles in 1978. Kevin enrolled in Tri-State Baptist College and had his first date with his future wife, Deborah, in 1981. He graduated in 1983. In 1985, he was caught by his coattails and promptly married Deborah. The family grew from two to five. Here is a picture of Kevin and his twin brother and his other twin brother. His fascination with motorcycles continued throughout his adult life, and when his son Philip was married, we see the nut did not fall far from the tree. Soon daughter Lydia married, and as did sons Stephen and Ben. Dr. Kevin Bernard is the pastor of New Horizons Baptist Church in Ward, Arkansas. The church has a vibrant missions program and a Christian academy. They enjoy the annual Senior Citizens Thanksgiving Dinner, Vacation Bible School, annual church Christmas program, and faithful preaching of the Word of God. Dr. Bernard has taken mission trips to India and Thailand, where he can be seen working on a children's homes and baptizing converts. Brother Bernard enjoys his grandchildren. From a little basketball player to a pastor and head of a large family, Brother Bernard has come a long way. Dr. and Mrs. Bernard have faithfully served the Lord together for over 25 years at New Horizon Baptist Church. But all of this basketball, motorcycles, weddings, building, baptizing, and grandchild holding sure wears one out, so it's time to say good night. Congratulations, Dr. Bernard, on a fruitful life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Congratulations, Dr. Bernard, on a fruitful life for the Lord Jesus Christ.